In this episode, we're going to modify a cassette deck and put a totally different motor in it because the original motor I don't have access to. But I was able to find one in another unit. Different voltage, but same physical size. We're going to make this motor work in this three head high end cassette deck and bring another one back from the dead. So, this is the cassette deck I thought this motor might work in. If you guys remember, this is the one that uh, someone got into and tried to adjust the speed and shove the screwdriver all the way through it and rip the motor apart. So I was thinking perhaps this motor might be workable in this chassis. So I took a chance and to say it's, it's the wrong voltage, but I think we can probably mitigate that. Not a problem. Just to drop the voltage down a bit for the motor. It's the correct speed, and if it'll fit, I'm sure I can get the pulley on there and make it work. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. This one here was one that was heading to the recycle bin, and it's a three head deck. So it'd be really nice if we could save this one. If you guys remember from the last time, I didn't even bother to connect up the uh, power connectors because the motor itself was shot. I just kind of stuck it together. So we'll pull the chassis again and get the motor out. And see if this new one will, will fit. I almost forgot I gotta pull the front, I gotta pull the face off this one. That's right, this bracket has to come out. I for, almost forgot about that. Clips pop out there. And I can lift this off and then lift the, the transport away. Okay. Now I can work on the, the uh, transport. I stole the belts out of this last time. So I'm going to have to put some new belts in. I stole a belt out of this to service another machine. So I'm going to have to throw some new belts in, but I should have some belts that will work on this one. Just to keep you guys happy. Okay, here's the old uh, motor right there. We'll remove this one. Looks like there's lots of, of uh, pre-drilled holes in this uh, chassis, so I should be able to uh, fit that other motor in. That won't be a problem. That was always my concern is do the, do the holes line up, but 
I think we, it will work. It's the same physical size. I just have to change the pulley. Put on this brass pulley instead of the plastic pulley. I may have to heat this up a bit just to make it uh, fit. So we'll do that. We'll get the soldering iron on here, heat this, this uh, brass pulley up to expand it a bit. That way I can slide it down over top of the shaft here on the new motor. So what I'll do is I'll just take the soldering iron and just use that to heat the pulley up a bit. That'll expand the brass because brass expands at a, a faster rate than the steel shaft. And once I have the pulley uh, heated up, I should be able to tap it and it will go down onto the shaft into place. That's warm now. So now I should just be able to tap this on. And if it's not far enough, I'll have to heat it a bit more. We'll try that and see. That should be probably enough. Let's just see how it looks when I put it into the, the bracket here. Maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, that'll probably be, that'll probably fit though. I'll, I'll 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 heat it a bit more and just lower it down just a bit more onto the shaft. I just don't want the, the belt riding too close to the front of the of the uh, flywheel so that it won't fall off, right? There, that's probably good enough. Excellent. The holes actually line up. Now, are the screws the same size? We'll find that out pretty quick. Looks like they are. Looks like my three screws that were holding the original motor in will hold this one in as well. No problem. Time to thread the belt around the two pulleys. And I'll just put it over there like that to hold it in place while I put the chassis back together and then put the belt onto the the motor. Actually, I want to make sure the alignment looks good. Yeah, it looks like it'll run right smack dab in the middle. If you look at the motor pulley, it's going to be right in the middle of the uh, of the flywheel. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, now we'll set the belt onto the motor, just like that, and turn everything to make sure everything is centered. It is. Excellent. 
Nothing's touching anything. Looks like we've got good clearance. Nothing's touching any belts or any uh, anything that's not supposed to be touched. Looks like the belt's got good clearance there from the from the mounting hardware. Excellent. So now we just need to connect the motor. And again, I'm going to have to deal with the the voltage difference on there because I think this one was a 12 volt motor. Yeah, this one's a 12 volt motor, and this one's a 9 volt. So. I'll have to throw a resistor in there at some point, but initially we can certainly uh, see this thing run, and it'll run fine. On 12 volts, it's not really, it's, it's not going to hurt anything because the speed is controlled. There's a speed control here that will set the speed accordingly. We'll attach the power wires to the motor. Gotta fish my control belt back on as well, which is right down here. around the other side of the police and I can pull it around here. And get the belt on like that. Now remember we need to drop the voltage down a bit on this one to 9 to 10 volts. I'm going to put a 10 ohm resistor in series and this will drop the voltage down approximately 3 volts based on the current consumption of this being around 300 milliamps which I, I, I can't see it drawing more than 300 milliamps of current if we can't get the speed right I'll have to change the resistor value but we'll, we'll start out with a 10 ohm just to uh, See how close we are. And of course I'm using a, a fairly big resistor so that we won't have to worry about it uh, getting too hot, drawing too much current. Set the chassis in place and put a couple screws in to hold it in, into uh, the base. But I can connect it up and test it.
putting some screws into the front of the uh, unit. Kind of hold it together for testing. All right, the moment of truth. 440 hertz tone. How close am I going to be without doing any adjustments? Am I going to be fast? I'm going to be slow. What do you think? I'm a little bit high. 442, according to the frequency counter on my scope. Let's adjust it. Bring it down to 440, but hey, it works. I can adjust this one. I was going to find the right screwdriver. There we go. Pretty close. I think that's close enough. Let's try this out and make a recording on it. This has got an auto tape tuning button on it. I wonder what that does. Does that set everything up? What does that do? I don't even know how this thing works. You got a bias adjustment, play trim, and Dolby B, C, and MPX filter B and MPX filter C. Hmm. Tape monitor. That works. Uh, record pause. this do? Tape tuning. What does tape tuning do for me? I guess it sets itself up for the tape is what it does. Interesting. I've never had my hands on one of these before. <laughs> We're going to uh, reset the counter here and I'll start a track up and we'll record it and uh, we'll play it back and see how it sounds. I'll just do this in, I don't know, Dolby B, C, what, what do you think I should do this in? Do it in Dolby C, I guess. Okay, um, record. Being a three head, I can monitor after playback or monitor the playback head while I'm recording like all three head decks I'll let this record and then I'll do what I've done before I'll I'll play it back and you guys can hear how it sounds once it's uh, recorded I'm recording this in Dolby C so I'll let this record and then uh, we'll play it back off the tape right into the camera you guys can hear how well this one records so say I went from uh, a junk machine with a shot motor because someone stuck a screwdriver in the back to adjust the speed and fucked it up um, to uh, a working machine all I had to do is buy another machine and basically turn a good working machine into scrap to grab the motor out of it but sometimes that's what we have to do to get these units working because finding these motors now is, uh, is tough you can get Chinese ones, but uh, do you trust the ones coming out of China? And you got to buy a quantity. So by the time you buy a couple motors to satisfy the minimum order and pay the shipping and stuff, cheaper to buy a used deck and steal the motor out of it. In case you guys wonder what the play trim is, I can demonstrate that while I'm recording. If I go to tape mode, listen to the treble. I'll do this on playback as well so you guys can hear it. I'm not playing with the bias or anything, I just got to set it at, at zero. So obviously tweaking the bias will improve the recording, but I'm just setting it at the, uh, the default, right in the middle. And I'm peaking at uh, plus four on the meter here.
Incidentally, the tape counter on here is in minutes and seconds, which I found interesting, and it is actually accurate because I rewound it to zero minutes and seconds, and this is right where the track starts. I'm going to plug this in, and uh, we'll record it directly onto the camera so you guys can hear how good this one sounds. Okay, that's about it. I measured the voltage on here. I'm getting about 10.6 volts is the average. Um, when I calculated the resistance value, I based it on the motor drawing, perhaps 300 milliamps, but this motor is probably a little bit less than that. So voltage is a little bit higher, but if I measure on the, on the uh, supply side, the unregulated voltage coming in is uh, well over 12 volts. If we measure here to the supply side, we've got like 12.8 volts. 
and I've got like 10.6 so we're fine not gonna hurt the motor better to have a little bit too much voltage and a little too less if I put a too high a value resistor in uh, it would drop the current and then the motor would be starved for current and that could cause speed fluctuations not going to be an issue it's not going to cause any heating or anything on here we're running about a volt or a little over a volt higher than what it's rated but keep in mind these are not in regulated circuits anyway the motor itself is generally connected just to a, a, a bridge rectifier and a cap it's not going through the regulated supply like the amplifiers would so they have their own onboard regulation for speed control that's what that little adjustment in the back is for they have their own reference IC and their own uh, speed control internal so as long as you're pretty close because the voltage off the transformer going through the rectifier is going to vary depending on what the input voltage is so a, a motor that's rated at 12 volts will typically run fine from about 10 to 15 volts one rated at 9 will run fine from typically around 6 to maybe 12 I just don't want to put the full 12 on there so we put a resistor on there cut the voltage back limit the current a little bit but uh, it's working fine no heat in the resistor no heat in the motor it's been running now for a while and uh, everything's looking good so I'm gonna put this one together and we now have saved a nice Yamaha three head cassette deck from the landfill this was literally heading to the landfill when the guy that brought it to me asked if I could take a look at it I looked at it and found the motor was shot and at that point he's written it off but uh, maybe if he sees this video he's gonna want it back anyway uh, thanks for watching We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.